Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to the first Immigration.ca live stream of 2018. We'd just like to apologize we are a couple of minutes late. Thank you very much for bearing with us. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Andrea, and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca and managing partner of SkilledWorker.com. We've received a lot of requests, and thank you very much again for always leaving your comments. We do go through them, and we've been asked questions with regards to students and studying in Canada and how that does relate to permanent residents. So today we decided that we would cover this topic. Right. So Colin, I mean, what are some preliminary insights into this program for, you know, for Quebec, the Quebec Experience Program? Well, the uh, Quebec Experience Program is really, uh, it's an important tool for the uh, government of Quebec to uh, bring in uh, foreign workers and international students. So there's two streams in the Quebec Experience Program. There's the uh, working stream for those who are working in the province. And what we're going to be talking about today is the graduate studies stream. So really international students who have an interest in studying in the French province of Quebec, or for that matter, if you have an interest in studying in Canada, uh, you should really be looking at the Quebec program because, first of all, uh, it's one of the only programs that allow you to become uh, a qualified individual. You can apply for permanent residence probably much earlier than any other program in the country and with much less qualifications in terms of a study experience. So you don't necessarily have to go into a long-term study program uh, for uh, an individual to qualify to apply for permanent residence. So it's a very popular program. It allows individuals to uh, come into Quebec, uh, a great city, uh, for example, Montreal or Quebec City, uh, and uh, study in English if, if that's what most people want to do. There's a lot of English programs and you can choose a program. Uh, there are so many in the province that uh, allow you to uh, qualify for the stream of applying for permanent residence. And the interesting part about it is, whereas most programs for permanent residence require you to go into uh, a quota uh, position, an expression of interest, uh, this particular program has minimal requirements other than, uh, of course, uh, well, there are, of course, important criteria, but uh, there is much less conditions than any of the other programs. So okay. it's quite easy to access for those who are motivated um, and it allows you to become a permanent resident and acquire a great education and a quality of life uh, in, um, the, for example, Montreal, uh, where the cost of living is reasonable and the conditions uh, are quite uh, dynamic. So you have a lot of benefits by coming to the province of Quebec, which everyone knows is a French-speaking province, but that doesn't mean you need to be studying in French, although that could be an option for many. So it really presents a wonderful, interesting option. Great. And just to briefly mention, if you want to read more about this, it's in the study portal. So if you go to immigration.ca, we have our study portal and we cover all of this there. It's on our study portal okay. uh, and as well uh, of course, it's, it's in the Quebec uh, immigration stream of our website. So if you go at the top of our website, you'll see different icons. One of them is immigration. You'll scroll down to the Quebec immigration uh, option. Or if you go all the way to the right side, you'll see the study uh, portal. And uh, one of the uh, choices that you can choose, it will be on the bottom right side. All of what we're talking about today is fully accessible uh, on one of those two locations. Perfect. Great. So, Colin, what does this program offer? Ultimately, the uh, Quebec uh, Experience Program Graduate Study Stream, as we uh, initially uh, discussed, is, is allowing an individual to come to uh, the province of Quebec uh, on a valid study permit, um, complete an approved full-time study program, and uh, then be qualified to apply for Canadian permanent residence. Uh, ultimately, uh, individuals who become a Canadian permanent resident bear in mind uh, all residents, permanent residents of Canada uh, are uh, entitled to live and work anywhere in Canada. So once you are a Canadian permanent resident, 
Our charter uh, laws allow Canadian citizens and Canadian permanent residents freedom of mobility. So once an individual has applied and has, of course, indicated uh, their intention to stay in Quebec, uh, ultimately, uh, if, for example, employment opportunities are not favorable to an individual, uh, or for any other reason, uh, a Canadian permanent resident is free to relocate to any part of Canada. So that is really the gist of, of this program. It's, of course, Quebec government would like to encourage people to stay in Quebec. Uh, there's a certain number of people who do uh, apply for permanent residence after uh, studying. Um, and perhaps uh, one of the more important elements of the program is you do have to show uh, proficiency in speaking French. So in addition to having uh, a study permit, in addition to uh, completing one of many, many possible programs, um, and then you do need to show, uh, which we'll discuss in a few moments, uh, a, a pretty um, intermediate level of uh, speaking French. So okay. this we can discuss in a moment. Okay, so then I guess, should we move on to the process? Uh, yes, I think that's a good, a good time. Perfect. So how does it, to start, how does it work? So the step, obviously, what that, the, the choice of a suitable program is, is the most important, one of the most important considerations. Uh, of course, there are more than 2,000 programs. So obviously, uh, you have choices, some of the programs, the minimum number of hours that a program should be is 1,800 hours. So that really translates into about a year and a half. So you can choose either a university program, uh, a professional uh, program, uh, depending on what your education history is. There are options for many programs that are really of what we would call shorter duration. Shorter means under three years, in the range of one and a half years to two years, 1,800 hours, there are so many programs in the province of Quebec offered by many approved institutions. So you want to be going into a program that's first and foremost approved right. by the government and that uh, you will qualify to eventually, if this is your interest, in a, being able to go into the Quebec uh, permanent residence stream by applying for permanent residence under the uh, program and you want to be able to uh, obviously find a job if that's one of your interests you want to have uh, good uh, options to become employed later on so the that, that's the general gist of, of what we're initially looking for let's okay. let's talk about some of the programs okay for example a bachelor's degree that would be a straight away there is many universities uh, in Quebec uh, in Montreal uh, so you can obviously if you're uh, a high school graduate uh, you could be looking at a bachelor's degree in the province of Quebec you can be looking at a master's degree or, of course, those are the traditional formal university programs that one could be accessing. Uh, There's other programs like the DEC. So in Quebec, we have, uh, prior to university, the Quebec system uh, is what we call CGEP. And that uh, process is usually two years, can be three years. So you could be applying into uh, a publicly funded uh, CGEP system, which is leading to a, a degree called a DEC. Uh, it's a, a diploma of, of collegial studies. Um, some, yeah, so the vocational program. Right, and and you know, really, a lot of people want to go into a vocational program, a trade program. Really, there are so many programs uh, at that level. Uh, you could be. Uh, studying um, the arts, you could be learning a trade. Uh, there's just so many sub-programs offered throughout the province and it's really a question of learning where those programs are, if that's what your interest level is, uh, and uh, making sure that it's an approved program and that you uh, obviously can, can, can get into the program. Uh, that you that you look so that you're looking for. So once you've uh, look, once you've identified 
uh, a particular program, uh, you then want to, of course, apply, get an approval, and uh, I suppose applying for the study permit once you're into a program uh, is a challenge for many people. And I guess it's fair to say it depends on what part of the world you're from. Because unfortunately, and this is a, a fair statement, visa missions outside Canada, uh, depending on where they're located, uh, apply different standards. And, and I'm, uh, I, I, I can say with certainty, um, there are certain parts of the world, uh, unofficially, that the Quebec government is targeting. Uh, because they uh, feel so uh, that uh, the individuals will have a, uh, a better chance of, of uh, economically succeeding in the province, or, or for whatever the reason is, let us just say that there's informal discrimination that is practiced by uh, governments in Canada. Uh, it is not official, but it is, it is a fact that depending on what part of the world you're coming from, uh, the criteria will be applied strictly or it could be applied more liberally. So uh, your profile is very important, but it's also important where you are applying from. So unfortunately, the realities of uh, the current law of the land, as we say, uh, is, and, and of course government officials will categorically deny, but we see in our practice uh, certain individuals who live in certain parts of the world have much easier access uh, to these programs than others. And it's really a question of where you're living. So if you're going to be involved and you're looking to come to Quebec and study here, uh, of course we have proper insight into what are the prospects. And it's really depending on what program you're going into. Uh, so your profile includes age. Age is, is, is clearly an important element. If you are overseas and you are uh, outside the age of, let's say, 17, which means you're just finishing uh, high school, 17 or 18, some individuals as young as 17, uh, perhaps, you know, realistically, the general rule is 17. The question is, to what age can you really logically consider this program? And we have, in our own... Um, uh, arbitrary uh, estimation from our experience if you're older than age 36 this program is not for you anyone who is in their late 30s or uh, 40s or older it is very unlikely that you will succeed in getting a visa to come and study uh, in Quebec so those who are looking to come to Canada acquire Canadian permanent residence and are uh, looking to come into a study program, particularly in the province of Quebec, as we are discussing today. If you are older than age 36, we will not take your case as a matter of principle because the chances of success are remote. That's from our experience. So it, it, it's no use you looking if you don't have the proper age profile. Education history is, is important in the sense that you have to be going into a logical uh, extension of your current um, uh, education history. That doesn't mean you can't uh, go into a program that is uh, a lower uh, qualification. Let's say you all have a bachelor's degree already. That doesn't prevent you from going into a one and a half year or two year uh, marketing program or computer programming or uh, something perhaps that's an, an accessory to uh, your current bachelor's uh, degree. It doesn't mean you need to go into a master's degree, which would be two years typically. You could go into and apply to a vocational program that would complement your life experience. So it's a question of ensuring that what you choose makes sense. It has to make sense from an objective perspective. Um, so the program you choose in Quebec is very important in the sense that there has to be some logic in the continuity of your study path. Uh, and perhaps one of the most important elements is finances. So uh, applying for the study permit, obviously you have to have the finances, which we'll go into in, in just a moment. 
Um, in terms of other important elements, the history of whether you've applied for a study permit previously uh, is very important. If you have already applied for a study permit and you've been refused within the last 12 months, we will discourage you from proceeding with another application. That is just uh, unfortunately the situation. So if you're going to consider taking this step forward, you really have one chance. Uh, one chance for a 12-month window unless something dramatically has changed in your profile. Uh, so if you're going to apply on your own or you're going to use a consultant in your local country, which we highly discourage, um, you should be very careful because the acceptance rates vary depending on what part of the world you're in and you only get to do this one time in a 12-month window. More than that, you are just compounding the, the remote chance. Uh, you, you are, you are, tr you are over, trying to overcome an insurmountable obstacle if you have applied once or twice and been refused in the previous 12 months. Perhaps uh, one of the important considerations when going through this application process is the, the arbitrary consideration by a visa officer making this decision, and they have so many applications. Uh, bear in mind, Canada uh, issued more than 400,000 study permits to international students in 2017. The test is, is there a likelihood that you will leave Canada at the end of your period of study? So. Uh, that's a very subjective uh, element. It's applied arbitrarily uh, depending on what part of the world you're from uh, and depending on your profile and so many other factors. And perhaps uh, another and perhaps one of the last important elements uh, uh, that I think are, are, are uh, need discussion is do you have the language abilities to access and study the program that you've chosen. So if you are going to study in English, do not submit an application, even though you've been accepted into a program, unless you have advanced English levels to pursue this particular program. Uh, so it's very important that you have the language scores that would indicate that you have a reasonable prognosis to pursue this study, to go into the program and succeed in the program. Because if you don't, you will be refused and do not consider applying into such a program uh, if your English or your French, uh, for the, uh, the choice of, of, of your program, uh, make sure that you have the ability to go and pursue those those programs. Um, so I mean, we we touched on finances. Should we go that? In, well, we'll we'll go into finances in further detail. But just to remind you, uh, this is all on our website. So if you go to the study portal or the Quebec section, as Colin mentioned, we do go into the finances as well. Yeah, I think just generally speaking, uh, if you're going to come and study in Quebec, uh, perhaps uh, the the most important takeaway that you should really uh, learn from today's presentation, you need to obviously have the finances to pay for the tuition uh, of the program, and you need to have the finances to cover one year of expenses. So if, uh, roughly speaking, a program will cost about $15,000 if you're an international student, it will cost you $15,000 just in tuition to come and study for one year in the province of Quebec. Add to that, uh, generally speaking, for one individual, the living expenses, uh, in addition to the tuition, is another $11,000. So the, the bottom line, the most important message is, if you do not have uh, $25,000 to $30,000 Canadian, either in your own account or if you are uh, going to rely on the assistance of family, uh, you need to have, be able to show that your family has access to these funds, uh, which generally is in the range of twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars per year. If you don't have this kind of funding, there is no possibility for you to access a study permit and a study program to come to Canada. So do not waste your time, and unfortunately, 
uh, this is not an option that is open to you. Uh, to have a better understanding of the finances, uh, it's on our website, uh, on the document that you'll access that we just uh, told you about. Inside that document, there are other links, including uh, what finances you need uh, to qualify uh, for a study uh, permit. So, well, I mean, we've covered the study part, so should we move on to the permanent residence part? Right. So, Application for permanent residence yeah. for many people is the ultimate objective. Uh, there's nothing wrong with ultimately wanting to apply for permanent residence, assuming everything goes well, you've completed your program, uh, you can apply six months before you're going to graduate, and you must apply no later to access the Quebec uh, program. You must apply no later than three years uh, after you've received your diploma. Now, uh, once you've gone into the program, uh, while you're studying the program, you really need to consider your French knowledge, your speaking ability, uh, in uh, the language of French. Uh, so we have many clients who come to Quebec and who have very little knowledge or no knowledge of French. Uh, it's reasonable that in a year and a half to two years that you could be uh, taking courses that are approved by the Quebec government. They're very reasonable and very feasible for so many people. Again, it's a question of uh, your motivation and your um, uh, time uh, being uh, allotted to the process. But there's four ways that you can prove uh, your uh, speaking ability in the, in the French language. And when you are submitting your application for permanent residence, you need to be able to prove one of these four options. Either uh, you will have taken your, your study that you've chosen that uh, process can be done entirely in French. So if you have chosen to study entirely in French, you don't have to prove anything else. The evidence speaks for itself that you will have a, a diploma that's confirmed that you studied in French and that in itself will meet the criteria. If, for example, you are studying in English, then you have to go and uh, take a French test there are, um, it, all of this uh, is, is on our website. You will need to pass uh, intermediate French in terms of your speaking uh, ability. Um, you can also take, particularly, you can enroll in a particular French course that would uh, go parallel to your initial choice of study. So while you're going to school in English, there are approved courses that you can uh, enroll in and that are recognized uh, by the province of Quebec. So they're reasonable courses, they're part-time in a sense that this is not a full-time study program. You'll be uh, going on a part-time basis, enrolling in these uh, advanced intermediate French courses. They're very reasonable, very feasible for so many individuals who are motivated. And if you pass those courses in French, the mere, uh, rec the, the mere diploma that you're going to receive is, is going to be proof in itself that you have the required ability to uh, qualify. So uh, those are the three main areas. Again, this is on our website uh, in the document that we've identified. You will be able to see uh, exactly what, uh, what ways do you need to follow in order to prove uh, uh, the French requirement. So what are some additional considerations that we might have? So I, I suppose uh, one area of, of importance for, for people is, is how long this takes. Uh, in terms of applying for a study visa, it generally is quite quick. It can be done depending on the time of year, but it's generally done in a month or two. Uh, sometimes much quicker depending on the mission and depending on other factors. But it's generally one to two months to actually apply for the study permit. Uh, in terms of applying for permanent residence, once you've gone through the program, the processing times are also under three months in terms of the entire process for Quebec. It's generally in the three-month range for you to get an, a, a, a decision. Uh, so another consideration, of course, once you've received approval from Quebec, 
uh, you're looking at applying for the Canadian portion of the application, that could take uh, another six to nine months. So depending on where you're from, uh, the entire process is about 12 months. You should figure in the range of 12 months from beginning to end to cover both the Quebec side of things and the federal uh, processing which handles mostly medical uh, and security background uh, check of an individual and their accompanying dependents. So another consideration of course is choosing the right program. So it's not, uh, it can't be uh, overstated that choosing the right program uh, needs to, to be carefully looked at um, and I think this really brings me to the next important consideration. There are many individuals from overseas, uh, international students in major countries that are what we call source countries. So if you are in the Philippines, if you are in China, if you are in Iran, if you are in India, if you are in Pakistan, these are many of the source countries, even South Korea. Uh, what you tend to see is individuals will go to local consultants in those countries. We cannot overstate that it is highly uh, problematic if you are using an unlicensed consultant. Most of these consultants are only working on commission. They are only interested in receiving commission and they will only receive commission once you get a visa. But unfortunately, the permanent residence sides of things, they have minimal knowledge, they're unlicensed, and it's really not advisable to be working with unlicensed consultants in any part of the world. Uh, first of all, it's illegal. Second of all, there are many cases that are now coming to uh, uh, attention by, uh, from many avenues where unlicensed consultants who represented many individuals and the individuals themselves, their applications, are being flagged and being refused. Now, these are, these, are, I, uh, these are a growing number of cases where you've been using illegal consultants because they're not licensed, and it's, it's in your own interest to be using a, a licensed authority, a licensed professional, a lawyer, or a regulated immigration professional. So that cannot be uh, uh, over, overstated. Um, another important consideration is in terms of Quebec's, the, the, where it situates compared to all the other programs, it offers the shortest pathway to Canadian permanent residence. So that means you don't need to go into a, a bachelor's degree. Uh, you can uh, access the Quebec approved program of study by uh, choosing the right program and it, as we said earlier, could be as, as, as short as 1800 hours, a year and a half to two years. Uh, interesting, you can uh, work uh, for 20 hours a week, that's a general uh, entitlement. It's rare that individuals won't be able to work, very rare, uh, but you're generally allowed to work while you're going to school for 20 hours a week. So. Uh, that helps out a lot of individuals. Uh, again, another important consideration is the processing time for these applications are very, very fast. And you're not going into a general stream uh, where you need a certain number of points. You're not going into a stream where you need to express your interest in getting permanent residence. Uh, you're not competing with other individuals. It's really, do you have the uh, graduation approved uh, study diploma. Uh, do you have obviously the finances to get the, the, the study permit? Um, and do you have the knowledge of French? Uh, so once you have those elements uh, under control, your chances of getting Canadian permanent residence, should you decide to apply, is very, very high. So uh, unlike uh, a lot of uh, the other programs, for uh, example, Ontario. Ontario has a program that's suited for uh, university graduates uh, at the master's level or the PhD level. These programs open and close with lightning speed. So they're open one day and close the next, or in some cases, hours later. So this program that we're talking about is, is not one at the present time 
which the Quebec government uh, has closed. It's always open. The Quebec government is always looking for people who meet those qualifications. And for the time being, they haven't yet put in quotas and closed uh, access uh, of this program. Um, pretty much, that's, that's the gist of, of our program. Right. So, I mean, how we would assist, then obviously we, we can assist with one of our counselors. We'd help you choose. Uh, as Colin mentioned, the program is key. So, applications with two suitable programs. We generally, in anyone who engages our services, we are going to apply to two study programs. And uh, obviously that you are wanting, we're going to review with you what your curriculum is, what your options are, and we're going to uh, apply and into two programs, up to two programs, if that's what you'd like to do. So we can start with one, if it works out, we can uh, continue with that program. Some people want to go with two programs at one time. So it's a question uh, of really getting proper counseling on your education options. And then obviously we'd assist with the, the study permit afterwards. We, we really have a good understanding, depending on where you're coming from, what you need to do to increase your chances of success. Now, of course, we can never guarantee uh, any level of success uh, in these kinds of mandates, but we have a good indication uh, of, from our vast experience uh, of what your chances of success are uh, once we have all of your details. Right, as well as, I mean, the work permit aspect of it? Some individuals will qualify for, uh, you know, uh, uh, again, you can qualify after you've studied for a minimum of eight months, you can get a work permit for an equal period of time. So you can get a postgraduate work permit if you've gone into a, uh, the program, if it's very intense and you've done an eight month program, that's 1800 hours. There's very few of those, but they are possible. But realistically speaking, if you've gone into a program for a year to a year and a half, uh, you can get a study postgraduate permit for equal duration. So uh, if you have graduated a program in a year and a half, uh, then you can look to getting a work permit postgraduate that will allow you to get work experience in the province of Quebec. We will help you with that as well. Um, and as well, of course, uh, we provide the employment search. Right. Talk, so about, talk about that, so you know, our general employment search. Right, so we provide uh, employment search assistance. You'll have a database of at least 500 potential hiring employers that you could contact. As well, we provide you with a Canadian-style resume, a cover letter, and other tools that would assist you in your, in your job search. You know, this is what I think, up till now, it really sets us apart for so many individuals, so many professionals in this field is that most of them will, will invite you to go and find your own. They'll give you links. They'll give you uh, just internet job boards to go and uh, look for jobs. Uh, that's the, sh the really an ineffective way of looking for employment. Uh, but if you're going to be in Quebec, we're licensed recruiters uh, in, the, uh, in Canada, uh, and we uh, have a very strong handle on how to find employment. So we're going to really put you in, in good standing with a, a, a really strong opportunities uh, for employment that will, we will really increase your chances, of course, without guarantees. Uh, so all of our mandates will include uh, assistance in and providing you with a database of viable employers that you can contact and other elements to our self-directed employment search. And obviously, ultimately, permanent residence. Permanent residence really is, uh, is for some people, uh, an important consideration. Uh, so obviously, we have a good understanding on what you need to do, uh, what you need to qualify, and we will obviously guide you uh, throughout our mandates. So yeah, on the permanent resident side, uh, that's an important consideration that we're uh, obviously uh, here to help our, our clientele, uh, and then we provide a full package. Uh, for the study side that will go from end to end with permanent residence as well. Well, I mean, that covers it for today, but obviously if you're interested, you know, please, please do contact us. And obviously if you're interested, maybe you, you watch this video and you're interested in the skilled worker program, uh, you can also complete the evaluation on our website, immigration.ca. Uh, please like this video and thank you very much for staying until the end. Uh, our next live stream should be in mid-February. Very well likely in mid-February. We've already got a couple of topics lined up. Uh, we also invite 
uh, our, our viewers as we uh, have in the past. Let us hear your thoughts on some topics that you'd like to see included. Yes. Uh, we, today's topic, uh, as uh, Andrea mentioned, is, uh, is one in which one of our viewers uh, asked for. Uh, it's an important topic, and uh, we're very pleased to, uh, uh, to, to, to complete that today. Uh, so give us some suggestions for the future on some topics that you'd like to see. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you in the next live stream. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us. See you soon.